Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. Band from Ringside. Tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast, we have your AEW Dynasty results. Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson have won for the age as a new AEW heavyweight champion. We have Tony Khan's taking bumps now, and Becky Lynch is your new Raw Women's Champion. I forget what it's called exactly that, and a whole bunch more tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast. I think all the Raw championships are world championships. Uh, yes. And then everything else is fill in the blank. That's what I was going to do. This is that 9 to 5. It's time to feel alive. Hello, Marks. Welcome to the Band for Ringside Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bill Vagy, a.k.a. Merv Strickland. And sitting directly across from me, we have Jason Cornelius Bell. What's going on, JCB? And we still got love for the streets. It's the BFR. And on that lovely note, I'll ask the congregation to bow their heads as we read. But I, I read from the latest, latest edition of the Band from Ringside Podcast, Volume 356. Chapter 3, verse 14, and the good smart say it, hashtag boo the heels. It's all good, baby. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat the holy trinity of BFR. Plenty to talk about on the AEW side. Still shit to talk about on the WWE side. I brought the charger just in case this motherfucker might run long. So let's kick it over to that west side. And out there in Portland, Oregon, fresh <laughs> back from his home of St. Louis, Missouri, we have two beers. Zach Coleman, what's going on? Two beers, Zach. Beer for Winston House. I'm oh, feeling pretty good. Uh, I just drank an ounce of the most expensive thing I've ever drank. Uh, it was real tasty. Um, it was racehorse cum. Yeah, I was going to dang it. That was good. My joke was going to be racehorse cum. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, what the fuck? I'm, I'm over here racking my head like, what's so expensive? Gooey tray. Secretariat <laughs> jizz. <laughs> We ain't got good sense. It ain't been two damn minutes. <laughs> it's called a secretariat shake. <laughs> and sitting to my right, we have Vice Bogies. What's going on, Vice? Hey, man, I'm here. I am jacked up. Uh, we, went to, we went to Dynasty. It was a good time. I've been handing out Oz cutters for fucking four days. Dynasty was a swell time. Zach came in. Uh, we had very cool seats staring right at the ramp. It was... A hell of a show, um, but we're going to get all into that. Uh, we are sitting in kind of chilly St. Charles, Missouri. Not much else to say. I don't know uh, too much bullshit around. We're going to let Jason get started. Let's get started with that. Three count. One, two, three. JCB, kick it off. Did we know Jinder Mahal got... No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to go there for 30 seconds. We know what we're here to talk about. The one count, obviously, we're going to review AEW Dynasty from the Chaffetz Arena down here in... Well, not down here, but down in St. Louis, obviously. If you know St. Louis, we're in St. Charles, not close to the Chaffetz. Neither here nor there. Obviously, the boys were there. I was not able to attend. I watched it after the fact, so you will get parts of the live uh, perspective from the boys, Vice included, and then myself watching it from home. Um, we pre- missed you. Hey, motherfuckers, don't wor- like I said, you had one job to do, and you did it. Um, the dark matches, we can go over those real quick. Trent beats uh, Matt Seidel coming back home. Welcome back, Matt. Here's your check. Keep it moving. Uh, Orange Cassidy and Shibata beat Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty. More losses for Shane Taylor promotions, but neither here nor there. And then probably the quote-unquote main event of the dark matches, you had Bullet Club Gold defeating the Acclaimed and Billy Gunn to unify the AEW slash ROH trios slash six-man titles. Yay, good for Jay White. He's a six-man champion. Fucking bullshit. All right, let's start the show off, which was kind of a surprise, but a surprise that was a welcome one you had for the AEW Continental Classic Championship, Pac versus Okada. I would, you know, and this is one of the things I was thinking to myself as I was watching it, kind of jealous as I was watching it from home and I was thinking about you guys watching it live. I'm glad I got the Okada experience out of the way live because there, to me, 
and I said it last year, and I think it was my uh, pop of the year uh, for the beefers or whatever the case may be, moment of the year. For me, as a hardcore wrestling fan, there are certain entrances you just have to see live and you just have to experience it. I'm not even a huge Okada fan, and I'm marking the fuck out when I saw him the first time he came out live. I'm chanting his fucking name, and that's one of the entrances I wanted to see, and I wanted to see everybody else's reaction to it. Obviously, we'll get to that here in just a second. I thought this was a really good curtain jerker to start the shit off. Okada giving the double bird at one point instantly made me fall off the chair. I was like, oh, fuck you. Incredible. This is the Okada that I never knew that I wanted to see and I'm now seeing. Pac was a great opponent. It had the big man little man aspect to it at least for size but Pac just basically threw Okada around like it was a little rag doll at certain points. You know, credit to Okada for that. The Brutalizer was the one point where I was like maybe, maybe because it was a kind of a throwback to the Kenny Omega um, feud that he had with uh, Omega back in the day. Maybe it was going to happen here, but it, thank God it was my Stone Cold Lead Pipe Lock of the Week, so it didn't happen. I thought this was a really good curtain jerker. Okada with the little rake of the eyes to set up the Rainmaker, which was a nasty-ass Rainmaker. I was like, God damn! <laughs> um, the, Great opener segment. The entrance of the night live is going to surprise you when we get there. But I'm not going to – I won't be surprised. I have my guess, but go ahead. Um, Zach, what do you think about this match? Uh, yeah, absolutely killer. I know uh, uh, that's Cecilia Thunder whenever we were sitting there, but it was kind of a surprising match for an opener because Okada is so methodical. And But just from the minute he came out, he had the entire crowd just eating out of the palm of his hand. And there were big Okada chants. Um, obviously, a huge deal for him to be in St. Louis. It, it's still a novelty because – uh, you know, he spent his career in Japan. Very cool entrance, but he just is so good at the professional wrestling thing and not just the technical aspect of it. He had that crowd eaten out of the palm of his hand, and right before he goes to do that Rainmaker pose with the camera zoom, he just throws up the double bird. And from that moment on, though, the crowd was totally oh, yeah. against him. I, I, I yeah. have to correct you because you both did it, but I rewatched that match today. It's just a single bird, which... Is, might even be cooler. Single, double, was, you got me, motherfucker. I thought it was just one, and then he said double, so I was just like, oh, maybe it wasn't double. No, it was just um, one. You got me, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, damn it was, journalists. Uh, Fucking marks. <laughs> <laughs> Great psychology, really well worked. Um, I mean, just kind of exactly what you expected. Um, this set a precedent for the show uh, where pretty much every single match either delivered or over delivered. And that was that remained consistent uh, throughout the entire night. Um, I had the same thought today when I rewatched it that I did when I was there at the show. Um, I think Zach and I were even talking about it because we were sitting next to each other at this point. But um, it's a strange opener because because of Okada's the way that he works his his matches always go to a crescendo. It's not like they start out. It's not like they start out and he rain makes somebody. Like it always starts off slow, and but. By the end of it, the crowd was in a frenzy. Uh, the crowd yet and yelling, he's our bastard, to pack on the way out. I mean, I'm sure we're going to talk about the crowd a lot. And, yep, maybe I'm biased, but nope. that crowd nope. was – that that's the hottest wrestling crowd I've ever been a part of. Bar, okay. Bar none. I won't go that far because I was, I was like – You've been to you, different shows than me. No, 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 no. And I'm, I'm not even going to go that far. I'll just say it like this. Then that's your take, and I'm not going to disrespect your take. You was you were obviously there. For me, my perspective was just comparing it to other AEW shows. Is this a hot crowd? Does this feel like a pay-per-view type of event? And to me, that answer was a resounding yes. And that, to me, is the, the reinforcement that... A, St. Louis is a wrestling town, and B, AEW is going to have to come back at some point next year, the year after this. I want us to be on a rotating yeah, for, uh, pay-per-views. for pay-per-views, even if it's not just Dynasty, if it's something else, whatever the case may be. I think that, to me, was the biggest takeaway. How did St. Louis, were we going to be able to keep up, be hot, stay hot, you know, react when you were supposed to react, things along those lines. And to me, we hit the marks. The cool thing about this match is that it only took one Rainmaker to put Pac down. Uh, it was the last move of the match, which I really like. 
And that I bet just, you did. That just tells me that <laughs> if these guys were main eventing, if these guys main event a pay per view someday, which could happen, uh, if they would they would they have more left in the tank. They could have had a better match, and they probably held it back a little bit because it was the first match. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, for me, I was like, God damn, that was the curtain jerk. I need a cigarette. What the fuck? It wasn't. I'm not saying they they left it all out. Yeah, totally <laughs> right there. I was like, fucking hey, this that's is what like, I did. I walked right out. And had a cigarette. <laughs> I was like, this is a good. What's the next match? Perfect cigarette break. Um, no, it was to me. I won't say they emptied the tank, and if they did, they never meet again. It will be a damn shame. You know, weird shit happens, but. This was a a great way to start the, the the pay-per-view. It was a great match. And for me, I think they left it out there, man. And, and not saying that, you know, they, they're they trying to outdo anybody, but I, I don't think there's not much more you could have done minus bringing in chairs, tables, things along those lines. We all had Okada. That was your lead pipe lock of the week, Jason. What was next? House of Black uh, versus Eddie Kingston, Adam Copeland, and, oh, Jesus Christ, I forgot the third person already, Briscoe. Mark Briscoe. So champions on, one, match. champions on one side, House of Black on the other. As I was watching this match, I was, I was thinking to myself, you know, that, how can these champions lose? This doesn't even make sense to me. This, you know, this is weird, you know, a match that doesn't make sense, it, it, at least in my head, it makes sense in kayfabe style, but just in the sense of – how this match was going to play out. It felt like a, a three beer special. This felt like a party match. Oh, yeah. Which it ended up coming up and being a party match in certain aspects. Exactly what I was going to say. But um, ultimately, I was, you know, my wheels were spinning to tr- figure out how the finish was going to happen. And they kind of did it in a way where I didn't necessarily see it coming, but I'm glad it happened. Malachi Black, Malachi Black spits the black mist into Adam Copeland's face, hits him with the roundhouse kick for the finish. Um, they told I, a cool story about how Black wanted no part, no part of him all night Copeland. long until the very end where yeah. he can get him in a scenario where it, it, it was advantageous to Malachi to spit the mist in uh, Copeland's face, hit him with the kick. Nobody's the wiser and everybody walks away. At least the, the heels will walk away. Um, Buddy Matthews, I think, is just still an amazing talent that just, for whatever reason, has been utilized well yet. Same way with Brody King. Um, Two guys that are always on TV and feel like they're always short-shrifted. A little bit. Uh, Brody King was in the Continental Classic. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. So we can't necessarily say that. Uh, the baby faces were baby faces, you know. God love Mark Briscoe. I just, I'm glad. No, I, I'm I'm glad that he's a champion, and he's gonna, you know, even if it's the ROA's champion, I hope he has a nice little run with that title. But um, I was just surprised with the finish. You know, ultimately, I thought the baby faces were going to win. So for me, as a House of Black fan, this was an, a pleasant surprise. You and me both had the baby faces. Uh, Zach had the House of Black. Zach, what you think of this match? I thought the match over delivered. Uh, very fun. Uh, like uh, Jason said, total party match. Uh, there were a couple spots where um, it was just, like, mayhem. Like, they did a triple spear spot that was nuts. Um, I did really love that Edge was the one to take the pin because if you look at that whole uh, match, you would you would pick that he would probably be the least likely to take the pin. Um, I had picked House of Black uh, just because I figured – Three of those guys have titles. They're gonna they're gonna have one of them pin one of the other ones just to set up some kind of program. It just made sense, uh, booking wise, uh, in my head. But um, yeah, match over achieved. Uh, it was pretty funny uh, because uh, Joey uh, was sitting next to me at the time. Uh, turned and said the exact thing that I was thinking was at the House of Black entrance. He's like. You're looking at three future WWE superstars. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. Ricky Starts has entered the chat. <laughs> uh, I'm with Zach. Uh, this shit over-delivered. Uh, Mark Briscoe was the star of this match. Mark Briscoe was really fun. Buddy Matthews right behind him. Uh, I said to... Oh, I was like, man, we've seen Buddy Matthews the last two times uh, they've been through town, and Buddy Matthews has been awesome both times because we saw in that collision. Collision, yeah. Daniel Garcia, I think. Um, Correct. This shit was fun. Surprised at the finish, but pleasantly surprised at the finish. So, yeah. 
No doubt, no doubt. Um, next up, you had for the TBS title, Willow Nightingale versus Julia Hart, uh, House of Black rules stipulation. In this scenario, you had Willow making the step that you did, could not have Willow, I'm sorry, uh, Chris Statlander or Sky Blue interfere in the match. So basically, this was a one-on-one match. And at this point, now I'm thinking to myself, this could have been the Stone Cold Lead Pipe Lock of the Week because now it really feels like Willow was going to win. This was a match I wasn't didn't have a lot of interest in. Obviously, um, not a huge fan of Julia Hart like Bill and Three Bill are, but I will give her credit where credit is due. She had a very good match. Pleasantly surprised, they made her look good. Willow obviously is someone I thought think they haven't done enough with, at least on the babyface side. Um, Considering what I saw on Sunday and what happened on Wednesday, I think that that baby face eye will be tapped into more. We'll talk about Wednesday here in a little bit. If if this was a, a bathroom break match, I'd have been upset with myself because I'd have missed a pretty good match. And this is a match I have very low expectations for. Will obviously wins the TBS title to set up a program with Mercedes Monet, who quickly pops out on the stage minutes after <laughs> Willow wins the title. I'm like, damn, this bitch can't even touch home plate yet. Shit, you know, you're just popping out and ready to fight. Um, good for Willow. You know, I'm I'm curious to see how the Mercedes uh, Willow build is, but I think for me, it's a little crow that I have to eat on the Julia Hart side. She had probably one of her better matches that she's had on her side as a singles performer. So this gives me a little more hope for her. Um, it just feels like I said before, just watching her aesthetically, she's so small, so short. It's hard for me to get away from the fact that she will beat Willow in a one-on-one match, and she didn't. So Zach, I'm good with that. Zach, uh, what do you think? Do you want to tell Jason? Oh, yeah. Uh, surprisingly, like, I mean, Karen Cross eats your heart out. You would be surprised at how Julia Hart does not come across on TV. It's badass. Her entrance it was is like, insane. It's so good. It's the intro uh, no, of the no, night. No, oh, it's 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 so good. No, no, fellas, I've never had a problem with the presentation of Julia Hart. I I I like the fact that she sings her no. song on the way down. I think that's kind of cool. No, what I was saying was, I said you're going to be surprised at what the entrance of the night was. It's Julia Hart. Julia Hart's entrance was off the chain. I don't. Oh, dude, everybody nope. everybody was into it. No, I have no Either problem that, with that. Or it's right when the edible was hidden, because right after that, mm-hmm. Willow Nightingale comes down, and on the screen behind her it says, "Nothing matters." And then it says, but smile Miles. anyway. Yeah. And I'm like, I looked up and I saw it say nothing matters. And I told Zach, I thought I'd put the they live glasses on real fast. I was like, what the fuck? It's like, does that shit always say that? Hey, and just like a forewarning, we just finished uh, two THC sodas. So, like, it might have been that. They were. Uh, fair. It, Completely fair. Yeah, this this match was fine. I was uh, high as a motherfucker, and what, I, I, I liked the Julia Hart uh, uh, entrance. So, I mean, anything to, say, you. anything to say about this, Zach? Uh, match was short. Uh, Julia Hart's injured, um, so uh, they didn't go very long. Um, but, yeah, what I expected was the finish. This was my Stone Cold Lead Pipe Block of the Week, right? Twas, yes, your Stone Cold Lead Pipe Block of the Week. Uh, what was next? Uh, K.O.R., Kyle O'Reilly faces Roddy Strong for the AEW International title. Um, thinking to myself, you know, coming into this match, you know, this was, and I'll defer to you guys, it didn't feel like it was huge pops either way when either guy was announced, but I'm thinking in my head, you know, this is probably going to be a really good match just looking at it on paper, how these guys, you know, have similar styles. You know, they obviously have chemistry because they've been on the road together. I was like, this could be sneaky good. Guess what? Your boy was right. This was really sneaky good. Kyle O'Reilly took bumps left and right from uh, Roddy Strong a couple of times and, you know, had me to the point where I was wincing. I love the fact that Kyle O'Reilly, you know, used the ground game to kind of even the match up. This was a nice back and forth. It felt like a, a strong style slash ROH match. No uh, fuckery at the end for Roddy Strong to win the match. So, I mean, that was a nice little clue on that. I thought this was a nice little spot where 
if you paid attention and you didn't look away, you were watching a really good match. What do you think of it, Zach? Yeah, the match was awesome. Um, these guys hit each other real hard. Um, outside of Shane Taylor on the pre-show, uh, they had the loudest chop. Shane Taylor had mm. the loudest chop mm. in of the night. Uh, but these guys, um, I can man, you know, they beat <laughs> they <laughs> okay. out of each other. Easy, big fella. <laughs> I was say, you, you know, we, that's a, that's a master's class right there. <laughs> I would be scared to take Shane, Shane Taylor's job. There's no doubt. I would be scared for you. <laughs> I'd say, wait, 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 wait. Hang on. He's the host. That means I might have to host for a couple weeks. You can't do that shit. Uh, you know, it seemed to me like these guys were having a these guys were having a different match than what it, it seemed like they were like having like a huge, like very dramatic, like end of the feud match. Um, this, I, I got to be honest. I got to speak my truth. In the room, this felt like it slowed the show to a halt i don't know i, re- they, they I rewatch it on. i rewatch it today on tv and i was like oh this is pretty good i don't know i think Hunger. i i think i was so amped up for the main events yeah and i mean if you think about kind of like where it was in the card we had you know okada back in the opener and then we had that crazy party match then we had a title change uh so like there had been it was definitely a different vibe for sure uh and it was a little bit uh, long they did go the time was on this but uh it it was a longer match um but technically like the wrestling and everything was awesome um yeah know, Roddy, Roddy Roddy wrestling, strong wrestling. just i mean those backbreakers he just didn't Oof. stop with them <clears throat> oh, whatever. I remember seeing t- Roddy strong just Love him in the ring, just not as entertaining as he as he as he has been up to this point that's just me what was next uh, yikes. <laughs> Jericho versus Hook for the FTW title. Um, I'll let you guys speak on it live. Um, the go retire Jericho uh, chant was the the point where I was just like, dude, this is just getting out of control. I didn't have a lot of interest in this match. I would be lying if I was watching it intently like I was watching any other matches. But... Um, I guess this is Jericho's new gimmick. Uh, this is why I wanted to pick first on Thursday because I, this was my fear that, you know, Hook was going to move on and they would leave Jericho with this new gimmick. We were talking yeah, about you guys him. both had Hook and I had Jericho. We were both talking about reinventing. The tree of learning. Uh, himself or whatever the case may be and how, you know, Jericho would be, you know, more apt to go away and you know we we, we can't miss you if you're not gone like three beers said but this is the new invention Listen, go ahead the the go home jericho and please retire chants were very loud around us and i said to zach i was like you know i might agree with these guys but i would never chant that extremely disrespectful extremely disrespectful to chris jericho <laughs> Okay, I'm like, is he ch- – man, that's what I'm looking at. You see me looking at him like – No, I wouldn't have chanted that. I wouldn't have chanted – I didn't chant that. I'm not going to chant please love- retire at one of the greatest of all time. Okay. I love how offended he is on Jericho's behalf. <laughs> that's I, what I, I did not expect to get this offended on Jericho's behalf. I was like, go home, Jericho. This man is giving you everything. Really? <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. That was my thought I, on it. I, I, I agree I with you. I got the, very protective of go, him. Go for ahead, some Bo. Reason. Go ahead, Bo. To be honest, I didn't see it. I went to bought it. I went. I went and bought a T-shirt. See, that's a mean, that's a mean <laughs> chant. That, that, you, I'd have been with you. That's the merch march right there. You know, fuck all this. Get and the merch. I got a double cheeseburger too. Yeah, I was going to say we got to roll load up for round two. I'm not saying that you would have chanted it. I'm just a little surprised that you're defending. Jericho after what has been said up to this point I mean, about obviously Jericho. Obviously it fucking rules that everybody was chanting. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, like okay. It's, fucking, it's interesting. That's why I was like, okay. I said it was interesting. This is where it felt like, and even though this was kind of, for me, a low point of the show, this is where it felt like this was a legitimate AEW pay-per-view. If I would have never known where this was emanating from, I would have been like, Jericho took a nasty bump in this match, though, too. That, 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 great, motherfucker. Great. I'll tell you what. <laughs> you know, no, no, spoil, no spoilers for the three count. 
I'm back in on Jericho. What the fuck? Oh, dude, I am 100% like this match. I, I, I turned to Joey. I was like, I really hope this match is not longer than five minutes. And even during the match, I was just kind of like, oh, geez, you know, like I I was not like super into the match. Uh, I am very much into this oblivious. So like he was working me so hard, like in these like past like couple weeks, I thought he was just completely tone deaf and he's just tone deaf character and it's fucking brilliant. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's really good. I like the pairing with Big Bill too. Oh, Jesus uh, what, Oh, what, yeah. 100%. Oh, my, oh, what the fuck? And I love that Jericho's walking around with that FTW belt, man. That it, <laughs> Acting like it's the most important thing in the world. Yeah, <laughs> man. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Hey, guess what? what? Somebody real has the belt now. Now it counts for something. Pass me whatever you motherfuckers are smoking. <laughs> I, I, I'm, this is the fucking Twilight Zone episode. Next up here at the... Where the fuck are we? <laughs> right? I'm like, did we not just have a whole conversation for like two weeks straight about how this motherfucker is time for you to go? And now he's like the most credible, not the most credible, but... He's what, embraced it. God bless y'all, man. I just... Maybe it's just me. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Next up for the AEW women's title, you had Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm. Um, I wasn't sure what kind of match we were going to get. Obviously, uh, I think we all picked Tony Storm uh, to retain for for various reasons. I won't say obvious reasons. Um, I thought this was a pretty good match. Ultimately, Thunder Rosa to me was the the wild card coming in. I think we know what Tony Storm can bring. In the ring, outside of the ring, you know, this time with timeless Tony Storm character has taken on a life of its own and has just shot her up into a different stratosphere when it comes to AEW and just wrestling in general, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Thunder Rosa was the wild card. I thought she brought, you know, a different, uh, I guess gimmick to this match uh, a little more intensity which kind of you know developed into the match and you know next thing you know we we had a nice little uh banger little match going um tony storm obviously retains with the storm zero ultimately i thought this was a, a match that zach said the word uh before it over delivered i had low expectations i went out pleasantly surprised the right person went over everybody walks away what you got three beer yeah uh this match did over deliver it was a really good match um like thunder rosa's best match since you know she wrestled Britt baker and you know mm-hmm. the saint patrick's day massacre or whatever the hell it was um but uh you know tony uh really not doing gimmick uh type stuff she just had like an absolute killer match um and i thought this was uh definitely um you know, worthy of like, you know, you talk about like AW World Women's Champion. Um, this is the kind of shit that we should expect from AEW. It was cool. Um, no, generally surprised on the uh, the intensity of the match. I thought this would be a more of a, a fuckery type match once uh, Mariah May and Luther got the boot. It turned into the match that I kind of expected. This is the the Thunder Rosa that I was kind of waiting for when she returned, and now we got her back. I'm not sure what this means going forward. Obviously, we'll be talking about her on Dynamite. Thoughts on the AEW women's title match, Mr. Bill? It was good. Uh, It was good. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thunder Rosa has uh, picked – it looks like she's picked back up that step that looked like she had lost when they were in town for collision. I was uh, very critical of her. Yes, you and were. And I made some jokes. Yes, you did. But she, was, <laughs> she was wrestling like a female dude. Oh! Um, yikes! What's funny about Tony Storm coming out is that you expect, and you're there, you expect everything to turn black, black and, and white. white. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple times I was at this show where, like, I would look at I would be outside smoking, and I would look at my phone, and I'd be like, ooh, I wonder if Twitter is a couple minutes ahead. I don't want anything to get spoiled. And I was like, wait a minute. I'm at the event. Like, <laughs> you don't say. I actually had that thought a couple times. I was like, oh, Shut man, the bitch. I shouldn't look at Twitter right now. I don't yeah. want anything to get spoiled. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. Maybe I should just go back inside this big-ass building. <laughs> 
Even while yeah, I was I watching it, even while I was watching it, I was like, "Wow, like this can't be spoiled for me." It was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, let's let's just quit pass around joints with random people we know we don't know, <laughs> and go back inside and watch the actual event. <laughs> But yeah, uh, this was cool. Tony Storm's a cool, cool customer. She fucking rules, man. The pussy scented candle remark on the AEW scrum right now, that's my promo of the year. I've watched that Joker two times. That uh, Tony Storm is a fucking savage. Holy shit. That was all fucked up. It was so good. Oh. Such character. Oh. That motherfucker had me in tears. I saw that on Twitter. I'm like, what the fuck did she say? So I went, I went, I searched this shit out and watched this shit. Holy fuck. She just ignites on motherfuckers and gives zero fucks. Zero. By the way, that was my Stone Cold Light Pipe Lock of the Week. Completely fair. I have no problem with that. I think that was. <laughs> so all three of us hit it. All three of us had different. Uh, no, which is great. Um, I like the fact that we it's all gonna t- rule when somebody misses their stone cold. <laughs> <life like that>. <laughs> <laughs> the first motherfucker that does that will never live that Joker down. I'm gonna start getting a little bit more fun with them. <laughs> okay, see that you, you see how the top spot fucks with him, right? <laughs> you want to go over the scores now that I said this shit? Um, hey, you're always you're always watching your back when you're in the front. <laughs> Come your six, bitch. So I've heard. Uh, Zach and I both had nine. You had eight. So I have 69. <laughs> Jason has 68. And Son Zach has uh, 65. All right. <laughs> Next up, I obviously. Up <laughs> <laughs> you did not have a good WrestleMania night one. <clears throat> I don't think anybody did. It, that was a little weird Somebody night. Somebody did. Oh, yeah. Never mind. The champ over here is winking. He ain't even won the shit yet. He's Yo over boy. here, do, he's Yo over boy. here do, doing a victory lap. Look at him. He's checking the fucking notes and shit. Go ahead. Go ahead, brag, motherfucker. Get over with. No, I'm just trying to figure out where Zach fucked up. Yeah, it was WrestleMania night one. He had he had Austin Theory third to win. Like, he... I mean, I'm not, yeah. I'm not yeah. rubbing it yeah. in. I mean, he said he must have screwed up somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, you, you ain't rubbing it in my ass. It's not like I study these. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, I'm going to defer to you guys on this because this is probably the match of the night. Obviously, the match of the year, probably. I'll let you guys discuss this. Osprey versus Danielson. I'll throw it to three beer because uh, this is the whole hold reason. On, hold on. I'd rather hear what you say first. No, 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 no. I just want to see your impression of it. Okay. No, right. no. You were there live. Okay. You, 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 should, you guys should be doing this more than I should be because you guys were there live. You guys were at least drinking it in. You still watched it. I mean, uh, yeah, Zach, of course. Zach, go ahead and go first. Osprey, Danielson. Yeah, I mean, we talk about uh, pay-per-view and the match is not just delivering, but over-delivering. Uh, this is one where the hype had it built to where, you're like, how could they deliver on the expectation of the match that they can provide? And they over-delivered on it. Um, it was absolutely unreal. Uh, the crowd was electric at multiple points, including Osprey's entrance. Like, Julia Hart's entrance was like a total spectacle. Nobody... The crowd was never more hyped. I've never seen a wrestling crowd or been a part of a wrestling crowd more hyped than just the the idea of Danielson and Osprey standing across the ring from each other. And then whenever the bell rang and Osprey like got everybody like hype up some more, um, there was also a double down spot that was the loudest that the crowd got for the entire night. Um, and then there was that uh, that knee to the jaw, the psycho knee off the odds cutter. Um, those were like the biggest pops of the night of, of just some unreal, uh, wrestling throughout the entire evening. Um, but, uh, yeah, Osprey is 100% a star. Uh, he's got so much charisma. We all know that he can provide the best wrestling matches in the world, which he did that, uh, again on, uh, Sunday. And, um, you know, he said in the press conference, it was his favorite performance that he's ever given. Uh, it's my favorite Osprey match that I've seen. Um, and it's probably, you know, just uh, a little bit of not just recency bias, but like being there in the room. But 
Yeah, that was uh, a special match, and I don't think you can even be uh, accused of any kind of like hyperbole uh, whenever it comes. If you if you watched it, you know you saw something special. Yeah, the thing is, is that <clears throat> it's tough to really kind of give it its like due because it's tough to be hyperbolic about two guys that were already super hyperbolic about in Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson, I'm on record as saying I think he's the greatest wrestler that's ever lived. Um, and Osprey, I think everybody recognizes after the last two years that Osprey is a generational star. Like he this he will define this era. This is the we are living in the Osprey era. And because uh, he's in his prime, and he's just now getting to the U.S., and it's going perfectly. Um, like Zach said, I've never been part of a wrestling crowd that was that hype. Uh, that entire match, that crowd was going nuts, and it came across on television, too. Unbelievable. Um, the Bisaiku knee to the Bisaiku knee, or how do you say it? Bisaiku knee, yeah. Bisaiku knee. Uh, the Oz cutter into that is uh, my markout moment of the year thus far. Um, where we were sitting, we were facing the ramp. So when Danielson was setting up for that, he was staring right at us. So I was just watching him, and I was like, oh, here it comes. And the execution on it was perfect. perfect. Um, incredible reversal. Um, certainly the greatest match I've ever seen live. I'm not ready to call it the greatest match of all time. I don't know if it's the greatest match that's ever occurred on U.S. soil. That seems to be one that's going around too. Um, but I mean, but we're but the only ones that I would compare it to are like, you know, the Mount Olympus of the matches. <laughs> so, uh, Jason, Kenny, Kenny Omega matches. That's the only thing I compare to. I, I was gonna say matches. I was gonna say Omega Okada one, two, three, and four are in there. You know? Yeah. What? Yeah. Go ahead, Bo. Omega was the only other thing you can compare it to, I feel like. So me and Zach got there early, and we're sitting next to each other. And I'm like, hey, I just got to warn you. Um, I'm one of those guys that's going to throw elbows and punch you in the leg every time something <laughs> cool happens. And Zach moved two seats down. <laughs> so when this match started, I was sitting next to Joey. I'm pretty sure he limped out of there. <laughs> <laughs> because Is that I was, why he left after this match? Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Because I don't think he could have walked. Because I was beating the shit out of him. Of everything. Especially the end. Oh, my God. Yes. Uh, Jason, what did you think of it? It translated on TV. There's no question about it. Um, Osprey's entrance felt, uh, and once again, this was one of those times where if you didn't know where it was at, and obviously it was here in our hometown. If you didn't know where it was at, it felt like a pay-per-view kind of moment where the Osprey entrance felt big, the Danielson entrance felt big, the just the, you know, the holy shit moment. You know, they had, these motherfuckers hadn't even touched yet. You know, you knew this match was going to happen. Hell, we flew this motherfucker in from uh, Portland to, you know, oh, to get this whole thing going. So, yeah, it was that big of a moment, and it felt that big of a moment. And it translated the whole way through – this was the match of the night, obviously, and it, and two other really good matches came behind it, which was kind of crazy. It it yeah. goes against some of the things that have been said, where you you know let's throw a popcorn match in there. For me, this is the way I would have done the matches itself, and the way it was going. I was I was sitting there like, okay, so we got this, this, and this next. That's it. I was like, oh shit. So you know, for this point, I was like, you know. It was going to be a really high bar that probably nobody was going to jump over. And that's just, that's what it is. It was a, a hyped up match. It lived up to the hype and then some, which is crazy to even imagine. This is one of those matches where you cannot sit here and tell me if you're a fan of just pro wrestling. If you take the tribalism out of the shit and you sit down and you watch this Dude, match. I got it no had, time for you if you didn't have time for this match. And you, it had you everything wrestling. you could possibly. If you're a WWE uh -oh. sexual and you're like, man, yeah, I'll get around to it. You know, oh, yeah, I heard I heard Osprey Danielson was good. Motherfucker, you got to seek that shit out. You can find it for free somewhere. You have to go watch this 32-minute absolute barn burner fucking Instant crazy classic. match. 
with the hottest, like I'm telling you, the crowd never stopped. No, never. Trust me, never was, stopped. The this was the night. one time where I was like, you know what? I wish I was fucking single. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, we we partied for you. Appreciate you. You were represented. <laughs> Thank you. The, the people Fuck. were people were nuts for Osprey, and the crazy thing was about 18 minutes into the match. Danielson turned him. All of a sudden, they were pro Danielson, which is just, he wasn't even doing anything overtly. No. It was just, just him. It's he the, was being awesome. Well, no, he, he plays that well, obviously. I mean, but in this scenario, it felt like Osprey was kind of taking over the match, and Danielson just kind of slides into his normal underdog, you know, role where you know he just fights for underneath so well and you can't help but to root for him and now you got this second wave of a match where now Danielson's coming back and now it's like we got this back and forth match going where Danielson's on the ground trying to you know put him in submission moves Will Ospreay's doing God knows what with submissions and reversals that we well, reversals in his case that we hadn't seen before this is just perfect I'm just sorry this like I said this was the one time where I was like man fuck my life right now jealous as fuck this was amazing I don't know if you could I don't even want to see round two I just don't. Just leave this motherfucker alone. I, mean, I know we're going to see it. I know we're going to see it because we just it, we, it's wrestling. You just can't have just one. But god damn, this motherfucker was perfect. You, it, the it's psychology going, it's going was going to be mythical. The psychology was perfect at the end, where you now was like, is this a work or not? The moves were good. The hype was. You just couldn't ask for much more than what we got. I can't even say there was anything wrong with this match. There was nothing. This was the literally the most perfect match I've ending, ever seen in my life. Zach, did the ending with uh, the angle where he does the Tiger Driver and Danielson's actually fucked up and Danielson is working everybody. I mean, Joey was texting people that Danielson's <laughs> are injured. I mean, just working motherfuckers. Um <laughs> Did that dampen Osprey? <laughs> that dampen Osprey's uh, win, Zach? No, I don't think so. Uh, I'm the story with it. Like I, I watched the post. Like obviously not. Whenever, not that night, but later on. And the idea was that um, it was like visibly shaken that he like hurt legend and somebody that he had looked up to. Uh, they were just given. Osprey is best performance and his favorite performance. So they're telling some kind of story with it. Um, whether that's the story of them wrestling again, I'm not sure. Cause I mean, dude, they sure as hell did not wrestle like they left anything on the table. You know no, what I mean? That like, was, that was the best match they could have produced. Yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't exactly. So, but they're telling some kind of story with it, uh, where it, it seems like based on Dynamite also, where, um, you know, he's like, I'm retiring the move, and Callis is just like, don't you dare retire that move. He's like, I want you to break Roderick Strong's neck again, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Callis was so good. Um, this was That was the only time where, you know, commentary across the board, I thought did a really good job from start to finish. JR was a little eh, but yeah. I didn't expect a lot from JR. But uh, everybody else, once Nigel McGinnis came in, it was like, boom, <laughs> it hit another year. 12 minutes into a match, this is how hot the crowd was, is that they just effortlessly went from an Osprey, Osprey, Osprey to a fuck you, Callis. <laughs> <laughs> I was screaming that. Hey, man, look, it just, that's what I'm saying. It was, it was one of the best, like I said, just watching it, it's one of the better matches I've seen all year long. The STL represented, and I know it's just not St. Louis. It's everybody comes in from everybody else. But the no. whole environment, to it's me, St. Louis, to me, it's it's the epicenter of the St. Louis uh, wrestling community for at least one night. So we're going to take the credit. Next up, you had the Bucks. Yeah, uh, I have heard that uh, Pavel cheese and systemic racism are really good for your vocal cords. <laughs> yeah, you just that's wash what it. we got. You wash it down with toast ravioli. <laughs> even, it's, all the racism is not even necessarily systemic. <laughs> Where's that gooey <laughs> butter cake you guys mother you motherfuckers keep talking about? Uh, uh, yeah, bring that shit on over. I'll fuck. I'll, I will beat that shit with a stick and then eat it afterwards. 
Bucks versus FTR ladder match for the AEW. Yeah, take. <laughs> You're beating your gooey butter cake with a stick. Hey man, shit. Yeah. That's how much I love it. Okay. <laughs> It'll have some nasty ass shit on it. And guess what? We still gonna eat that motherfucker. I love it so Oh my gosh. I don't get look, gooey butter cake is the shit. I'm sorry, not sorry. Bucks versus FTR for the AEW Tag Team Championship ladder match. Um I think that this is now the fourth episode of this rivalry feud, whatever you want to call it. Um this guy bloody early. <laughs> I was like, I'm sitting, you know, starting to settle in this motherfucker. I'm like, damn, who the fuck is waiting? Damn, okay. From that point, it just kind of took on a, a whole nother level of the match. I thought this was an, another solid episode of their feud. Um, Jack Perry, obviously, is the story of the the match here. You guys were there. Um, didn't know what was going to happen. The next thing you know, he pops out. And, oh, as soon as he came out, I was like, who the fuck? Oh, never mind. Now I wanted to see how the crowd reacted. Huge pop for Jack Perry. I'll let you guys talk about that, and then I'll pick it up from there. Go ahead, Zach. They did a really good job with uh, that angle, like with security and stuff coming in. Because for a second, I legit thought it was a fan. And then he goes to push the ladder over, and I'm like, oh, that's not a fan. I I wasn't even thinking Jack Perry, and I should have been. But I don't know. There's there's so much going on. But – they, I, I don't want to say they struggled at the beginning because the crowd was into the entrances for sure, but that was just a hell of a performance right before. So, like, I'd say the first couple minutes, uh, but yeah, after they, were, they worked hard minutes, to get everybody back into it, they really did. Like, it's a testament to how good those guys are that it didn't take them hardly any time, um, to get us back into it. And I mean, holy shit, uh, some of the spots on here, like this. This match actually had my favorite chant of the night. Uh, maybe my favorite wrestling <laughs> chant I've ever heard, which is, please be careful. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. They, they said it when it was, I think it was Cash and Nick were on top, top of the, of the ladder, ladder together. I was, yeah, they, they, you guys started chanting, and I was like, yeah, that that feels about right, because this is starting to get to the point where I'm like. By the way, when I said <laughs> Cash and Nick, I was like, God damn, is that their names? And then I was like, I don't know if it was Nick or Matt, but I just chose Nick and figured I had a 50% chance. Yeah, you had 50-50. I, I'm not sure if you're, if you're even right either way, because yeah, consider you, don't, you can't pick either one of these motherfuckers out in the lineup. The spot of the match, though, was the pile driver through the ladder. That was. <laughs> yeah. I was like legit worried for the guys because I I kept fucking telling these guys I was like that ladder doesn't look like it's on there very solid and the a ref was holding it the whole time I didn't see that shit see the, fuck all that the ladder looked like it was set up like the uh, BFR podcast it was just like <laughs> unprofessional bullshit <laughs> it was so scary absolute fucking bullshit. <laughs> This match, uh, this match fucking ruled though. Had a great ending. Uh, I was thinking Jack Perry, um, and it's the right booking move too. This was done. This was done perfectly. I would say this was like a perfect ladder match. Like I would, I would give this like this match oh, with the angle and everything. Like this was like a five star ladder match. It was fucking phenomenal. Yeah. Um, it's not my favorite ladder match I've ever seen. Uh, my favorite ladder match is still that De Los De Los Mertes, uh Young Bucks, uh, Pentel Zero, and Ray Phoenix. But it's pretty damn close. Jeez, yeah, that was that was sick. Um, I'll just say this as just being bitter for thirty seconds. It was nice for AEW to send Jack Perry over to New Japan to heat him on up and bring him on back over and get him right ready for his uh, AEW return. I can't believe how well it worked. Yeah, I mean, no it, shit. It was a crowd full of smarks, but I mean, Jack it's Perry still working. Is, Jack Perry it's still is working. Over. Yeah. Okay. Now here's my question: How's New Japan to benefit out of this? None. Okay. Okay. I'm just joking. <laughs> I, said, I, like the, I like the promotion. But okay, like, but uh, that's my point, though. You, you, we all tickets at Windy City, and there they'll be they, they, like the back and forth will help, but like they are hemorrhaging talent. Um, to so, Tony like, Khan to, mostly. Yeah, but if it wasn't Tony, uh, like if there's other people paying, like it's not like Tony's fault that he can pay these people more. Whenever not at all. Contracts are up. Agreed. But they are hemorrhaging talent. They need Agreed. to generate some new stars and stuff. But uh, I think that back and forth thing will work. 
that will work in their favor. Like, you know, Moxley is their champion right now. I mean, that's that's pretty beneficial. That does help. That does. Okay. Maybe that is what they got in return. That, that's for, j- just on the business aspect of it. It Moxley makes sense. Now, if subs go up, if you get more attendance, more merch, let's talk. Until then, this benefits one company, one person. AEW tell you slash what, Tony Khan. I got more to say about this later. So Yeah, we can hold on to that. Um, main event time. Uh, what we, second time I was probably jealous. Swerve versus Samoa Joe for the AEW heavyweight title. Swerve coming out looking like Black Panther like a motherfucker. I was like, God damn. Hell of an outfit. <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Hell of an outfit. Dude, Bill was doing the swerve. And it was the whitest, funniest thing. Don't, I don't give awesome a fuck. I've ever seen. Dude, Perfect. that shit. I loved it. I, was doing, I looked just as dumb. I was right next Dude, to him doing no, it. That's, that's me. I'm Merv Strickland. I'd, 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 have been the, I'd have been the dumbass that wanted to be doing the, the jump around in the circle and shit and the crowd full of motherfuckers why I couldn't jump around and shit. So, yeah, I'd have been so, just really fucking the shit up. Um, great entrances both ways, even with Samoa Joe coming out afterwards, just all business, which Samoa Joe is more times than not unless he's, you know, cracking you with uh, something on on the stick. Samoa Joe being all business. I thought this was a really good way to set up another big fight, big feel main event scene that it felt like for me. Like I said, just watching it on TV. Um, pretty good, really good actually. Yeah. Um, it felt like this was a slow start, but once again, I think that that's just fatigue of having two really good banger back to back matches, and now you got to get up geared up for the AEW title match. Uh, Samoa Joe made Swerve look good. You know, I thought this would, would might happen where Samoa Joe would end up winning this match, but I would tip my credit to Tony Khan. I said this m- multiple times. I never thought he would be able to do this, but this was just felt like it. As the match went on, it felt like there was no way on God's green yeah, earth that really. you could have not given Swerve the title. Tony Khan might not have made it out of the building if Swerve did not win the title. It felt as the match was going on, it was inevitable that Swerve was going to win. Obviously, he did win. Um, I'm not making comparisons between Cody and Swerve. I don't give a fuck about that. To me, one has one story. The other has another story. They're both great fucking stories. To me, Swerve is just a little different because it's more of an independent scene where if you didn't know who Swerve was in Seattle, to me, at that point, he's new to you. For me, fortunately, I watch enough wrestling. Or I've seen him. Uh, Lucha Underground, that's one of the big spots that people don't recognize that he was in, that he was there. And now to be the AEW champion, that's its own different story. And it's just as good. Zach, what would you think? He was on... He was on top of MLW when mm-hmm. MJF was a fucking mid Carter. So, um, anyway, uh, <laughs> that's when I started watching MLW. But, uh, yeah, uh, this was a fun match. Uh, definitely felt like a main event, heavyweight title fight. Um, it had that, like, big match feel. Um, you know, Swerve is awesome. He's on this, like, meteoric rise, and he's just such a cool cat man. He is fucking. Very talented in the ring. He has just a, just a, like a, just a kind of oozes charisma. And uh, he seems like he's got like a really great attitude about everything. And um, I'm excited to see him as champion. Uh, Joe was fantastic in this match. I'm not taking anything away from the swerve, but Joe was so good in this match. Uh, he was such a good champion for the short time we had him for the four months or whatever. I mean, uh, Joe reminded me of, like, uh, Big Van Vader, like, in this match, just doing, like, the open-handed slaps and just being, like, physically dominant. Um, he uh, is awesome, and as soon as he got pinned, he fucked right off to the back, uh, like, immediately. <laughs> yep, that was about to say, damn, that was quick. Um, I almost thought there was going to be an angle because of that. Yeah, but, no, they gave him a celebration, and, yeah, he was out there for probably, like, five, seven minutes like celebrating it was good uh joe was also a good champion for AEW. uh he put on good matches he was on tv a lot and uh he did his thing which felt, is, he felt like a world champion he did um he put swerve over big uh swerve is 
smooth, man. He's quick and he's smooth. Um, yeah, you know, as you know, he's AEW's first black champion. So I would really like to speak on how I feel now that uh, a white guy is no longer champion, or at least, you know, Samoa Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I feel underrepresented. I mean, really, uh, the Bowens are the white people in the it. wrestling world. Really. Yes, JCP, that is you know true. You want to. <laughs> I'm going to finish first. <laughs> He's got a shovel in his hand. I mean, why, why, why am I going to stop him from digging? <laughs> I feel like it's not fair. Hmm. <laughs> mm. Uh, but yeah, uh, Swerve winning is cool, and uh, it's cool that it happened in St. Louis. I mean, yes. for this match to even be talked about at all after the two matches that came before it, plus Okada and Pack, is a real testament to how fucking great this pay per view was. And this was a pay per view without Moxley, without Kenny Omega, without MJF, without Darby Allen. I mean, those are four big That's stars. The Without CM Punk, <laughs> you know, without now, now, true story, you know, it's, Adam it's, Cole was there and he stood up, so it looks like Adam Cole's going to start wrestling soon. But I mean, Adam Cole I was forgot about the, that. Adam Cole wasn't on the card. I mean, this was a stacked ass, fucking loaded ass pay per view, and there was a bunch of people that weren't on it. So, hell yeah, yeah, no, no doubt. Letter grade. Oh, come on. I mean, <laughs> Do, yeah, do we have an A to? plus? A plus. I was getting ready to say, yeah. As much as I, I, I bang on AEW, Tony Khan, you know, shit don't make sense. This was, I mean, undeniable in the words of Cody Rhodes. You know, um, it's an A, A plus, whatever you want to give it. It's, it's the best pay per view of the year so far. All right, let's get to that two counts. One, two, three. Two beer. What's the two count? Uh, two count, we'll just uh, stick with, um, we can breeze through the two count because a lot of it is related to Dynasty. We'll just talk about um, Dynamite, really. Uh, there was some good matches on uh, Collision and Rampage and stuff uh, that kind of set up uh, Dynasty, but we don't really need to get into those. It was good wrestling. If you like wrestling, watch those shows. Uh, they set in the storylines for Sunday, but... Uh, now we are spinning off of Dynasty. We're heading towards Double or Nothing. And Dynamite opened with um, and Okada and Jack Perry getting out of different uh, chauffeured SUVs. Um, so uh, he talked to Marvez, and basically Tony Khan has agreed to talk to Jack Perry in the ring. So that's going to be the main event angle. So... We had a title match on here. We had two title matches. Uh, or we had an AEW Eliminator. We had a New Japan uh, Heavyweight Championship match. But the main event was an angle in true old school WCW fashion. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never not, thought not about that until you said that shit. You are so right. This is Nitro all over again. Great call. That's not even a bad thing because uh, Nitro ruled a lot. No, uh, no, A lot of no. times, so, yeah. But it definitely was. Um, but anyway, uh, we kind of opened the, the main part of the show with uh, Best Friends. We saw that in the pre-show of Dynasty. Uh, basically, uh, Trent was trying to uh, not just sell the pay-per-view, but try to sell. He's like, hey, I'll, I'll look for your answer uh, on Dynamite here, Chucky. And, um, you know, cut the promo and uh, basically, Chuck Beretta, or sorry, uh, Chuck Taylor on his side. That does not go uh, over. And uh, Trent or Chuck finally gets to say shit on AEW TV. So that's like kind of a thing. Uh, that was Chuck Taylor's gimmick uh, before everybody started saying shit. And he was like, man, I can't say shit on TV because everybody else is saying shit. Uh, but he said it here. And. Um, called Trent a piece of shit, so it seems like he's on uh, Orange Cassidy's side, and uh, he says that he wants to fight him in the parking lot. And if you guys remember, um, <coughs> best friends pretty much have all their best matches outside the building uh, in the parking lot brawls. So, I mean, one of them, we even had a five-star parking lot brawl from those guys. So that sounds pretty fun. Actually, I didn't trip off of that. Um 
best friends have had uh, some of the better matches in, uh, in the parking lot scenario. Um, a part of me was kind of thinking that, that uh, Chucky might try to, you know, do a double agent, you know, swerve on uh, the swerve, so to speak, uh, and actually, you know, join Trent where it looked like he was coming in at least in my head, I was like, is he getting ready to, you know, swerve this shit and, you know, actually attack Orange Cassidy? But obviously that didn't happen. Um, Rampage will have that match on Friday night. That It'll be interesting. I mean, I would assume, you know, Chucky is at least healthy enough to have this match, you know, whatever happens from that point on. I, I'm not sure if he's that healthy or, health, or not healthy to have matches, but he can have this parking lot match. Doesn't even matter. You know, it's, it's obviously a callback to what they've done before in the past. So I am very happy that Chuck Taylor didn't turn also. I kind of wish he did, but, you know, that's just me. I want to see Trent Barretta go on his own for a little while. I'm not saying that he can't. I'm just saying that, you know, in this scenario with a loaded – loaded single side of the roster, you might want to have a uh, a fail-safe just in case for Trent Beretta. That fail-safe could easily be Chucky e. T. Uh, so, yeah, um, that will, will ensure that I'll watch Rampage at least. So, it, it, I guess it works. Um, good angle. Uh, but, yeah, uh, AW Championship uh, Eliminator match. Uh, Thor Strickland versus Kyle Fletcher. Um, pretty killer. Um I was kind of surprised that this was the first thing that we saw from Swerve, though. Um, they did a really good job with, like, the celebration. I don't – I didn't rewatch that. I don't know what it looks like on TV. Uh, but um, everybody was pretty hype about him winning. Um, apparently, there's going to be, like, a a celebration for him, like, on Collision. But I just thought it was weird. He's kind of, like, opening the show in a Eliminator match against, like, an awesome wrestler, and they had a really great match. But, like – I haven't seen Kyle Fletcher win a match in AEW except – or in AEW, you know, he won, like, ROH matches. But um, he's on AEW TV to lose in awesome matches. So that didn't really take away from the heat of this for me. I just really enjoyed the wrestling. I don't know what you guys thought. I just thought it doesn't make any sense to have him come out there and fight Kyle Fletcher. I mean, he, the show should open with him, and she, he should cut a promo. It's like – it's. Just because you're trying to be, you you don't want to do everything that WWE did doesn't mean that some of the shit they did just didn't work. It's like, he's your big champion. It's a big deal that he's your new champion. He's a well-liked, hot baby face. He's your first black champion. Have him open up Dynamite and cut a promo, a baby face promo. That just seems so ABCs to me. I'll- yep. I That's was a little I su- no, I was a little surprised that, that they to me, you know, I guess just as a Kyle Fletcher fan, you know, this isn't the guy that you want to have, you know, go down the swerve. I get it, you know, it's a it's a showcase for Kyle Fletcher as you know, going against the AEW champion. But I mean, he's he's a champion Who fucking too. Fucking rules, Kyle Fletcher rules so right. hard, man. and he's a, he's the ROH champion. So I mean, you know, just in silliness you're gonna have the old uh, television champion lose on tv that doesn't even make fucking sense i mean that right there i was just kind of pissed off i didn't even think about that i I totally thought about it that's the first thing i thought about i was like damn how's the tv champion losing on tv again not even for the time. <laughs> Isn't this what you do? <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? I'm like, God damn it, TK. You just can't get out your own damn way sometimes. Man, you now I'm locker. really thinking about it. You that got is a, so stupid. You got a locker full of jabronis in the back that would love, kill, give their left that's arm like, for this shot. And that's this like when is you're, what you do? It's like when you're driving down the highway and you see something like 300 meters up and you're like, don't hit that. Just don't. <laughs> it's right. It's going to be easy not to hit that. And then you're just driving, and then you just fucking hit it. It's like Tony's looking at the entire roster. He's like, who can go out and fight Storm Strickland, who I shouldn't even be having fighting anyway. He's, like, uh, he's looking at the whole roster, and it like it's just flashing above Kyle Fletcher's head. TV, TV title, TV title. He's like, Kyle Fletcher. It's like the worst one to pick. I expect this swerve <laughs> to come out for a victory lap and just – give him his moment. And I'm not saying that he deserves his moment because he's the first black champion. He deserves his moment because he is the champion. Yeah, but he can also cut a promo and just engender some, you know, at least mention maybe that's, that. Maybe that's next week. 
I don't know. They said it's going to be Saturday. Okay. It is weird. Yeah, I just think I agree with you guys. I just think that he deserves his flowers right away. I loved it. The same way we did it with everybody else. (laughs) By the way, the thing about this match that was fucking awesome was when Don Callis called the play for Kyle Fletcher. He says, Melbourne, Melbourne, which means go, go and get the table. To put him through the table, and Kyle Fletcher kind of looks at him. He's like, no, I'm not going to do that. And I wrote this down. <laughs> Don Callis says, they were, uh, Taz is like, oh, he's not listening to you, Callis. And Don Callis says, when an athlete thinks for themselves, nothing good comes from it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God damn that motherfucker shit. <laughs> Popped me hard, dude. No, 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 that's that's Don Callis one on one. Go ahead, Bo. What were you gonna say? Oh, I had nothing. Oh, okay, never mind. Three years this year. Uh, yeah, so uh, we had an angle with uh, Thunder Rosa and Deanna Peraza. Looks like they're gonna wrestle. They got into a little scuffle back there with Renee. Uh, we had a women's match: Anna J versus Mina Shirakawa uh, with Mariah May. Really like Mina Shirakawa. Uh, big fan of her in Stardom. She's got a lot of charisma. Uh, her whole like. Uh, gimmick like she's just like a sexy um like but like a, a good wrestler like sexy uh wrestler not just like um you know a bikini wrestler or whatever but uh this was pretty fun um but uh really the entire kind of point of it was uh to get uh serena deeb out there so it looks like serena deeb's gonna be challenging uh, Tony Storm for her AEW Women's Title, which is quite the challenger, really. Um, you know, as great as the Thunder Rosa match was, and Thunder Rosa, a, a former champ, um, and there's been some other, you know, good challengers and stuff. Uh, this seems like a legitimate threat to Tony Storm's reign. Uh, Serena Deeb's been built up uh, pretty good. She's a really excellent wrestler. So, uh, what you guys thinking? It seems like a legitimate threat, but not that legitimate. I would still put it as an outside chance, but it's not the chance isn't zero, and I felt like the chance was zero with Thunder Rosa. Oof. Yeah. I, um, I can't say I totally disagree with that. Um, like I said, it, w- it would have been a, a lead pipe lock of the week, at least on the list. Um, Serena Deep still looks like a wait, like an old waitress at Applebee's. The best, <laughs> like when she when she came out dressed up at Dynamite, she looked like she had gotten off. She'd gotten first cut, went home to change, and uh, then met you stop. out at the Hot Shots. <laughs> <laughs> Still would. It's not the point. <laughs> Let the joke sit. <laughs> God damn. You ain't shit. Uh, I agree with you guys. At least Serena Deep, you know, Perks my interest, you know, gives me the people's eyebrow, whatever you want to call it. Um, it it's at least intriguing, you know. I agree with what, uh, what you both said. It's a th- it's a threat, you know. How big a threat you want to put it, what number you want to give it, I'll let you guys call it. But it's at least a threat, so you know it'll lead into more of Tony being more of a wrestler and have to put the timeless uh, gimmick. You know, to the side for a little bit. I love it, but I think you know too much of it might be you might let it wear thin. It's it's got its own legs. You just don't want to run it into the ground too quick. It's a marathon; it ain't a sprint. Totally. Um, and then speaking of women's wrestling, we had a little celebration for Willow. Uh, so uh, Caprice Coleman did like a rap uh, for like Willow. That was interesting. I was like, what is happening? That's um, well. If if you watch ROH on the regular, that's something that he and uh, Ian Rick and Bonnie used to do when they did uh, commentary. One or the other would do a rap when Will came out. So that that's more for the ROH um, regulars, high five time and others. There's but, dozens of you. Unprofessional bullshit. I, look, man, I'm just saying, you know. I'm talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know that. I didn't know that either. <laughs> 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 it again. I'm pretty sure we're bullshit. screaming more. I'm pretty sure we're screaming more than ROH. Too. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I was just said uh, that was a, a fun little thing. But uh, uh, basically, the gist of this is they're not only setting up uh, Mercedes and Willow, uh, but uh, it also seems that they are 
still setting up this Chris Statlander turn because um, whenever they're talking about who knocked out uh, Willow backstage, uh, they were basically saying it. Uh, Stokely interrupts and says, "We all know it was Julia Hart." And it's like, nah, like it was definitely Chris Statlander. <laughs> but yeah. uh, the and I'm pretty sure that uh, Stokely knows that. Um, there's a little bit this this whole thing. I'm I'm okay with like. Uh, the Willow and the Chris, uh, I'm okay with, uh, even like Mercedes, um, you know, with Willow, that makes logical sense. Um, Mercedes, I think the best thing that could happen would be for, uh, Stokely and Chris Statlander to all turn heel on Willow. Stokely goes with Mercedes so that somebody can fucking talk whenever talking needs talking. Uh, and it's not Mercedes. Uh, Stokely as her mouthpiece would be like the most money thing that I can imagine. And then like Chris Statlander could be like her diesel to like Mercedes Shawn Michaels. Just that's, that's my dream scenario for this. Even though I don't want I do Willow not. to lose. Yeah. I still think that would be like the best, the best way. I do not see them putting Stokely Hathaway with uh, Sasha Banks. Is that what you were saying? I don't. Yeah, I don't see it happening, but I think that would be great. Stokely can talk for her, and then Chris Statlander can be her heater. I tell you what, man, they really fucked up this Mercedes Monet thing, didn't they, Jason? <laughs> I, I, as much as Bo's over there laughing, a part of me kind of, I won't say they fucked it up, but it's not what I thought it would be, number one. Oh, she's cold now. And she's cooling, um, for sure. Um, the fact that... She, she hasn't wrestled and she's you're asking her to build a match with willow based on she's basically like promo a, she's skills like a tiktok star now she just comes out there and dances <laughs> to a really terrible song to so the worst intro yeah. music i've ever heard and her dance is kind of dumb looking for, for the people that are listening, <laughs> Bill is staring at JCB right now. Like, Roman Reigns stares at one of the Usos. He's just daring him. Daring him to fucking no, go off on this. No, no, what I No, what I'm doing is I've been too positive for an hour. It's like, I got to start tearing some shit down, man. The universe loves balance. I, I, like I said, I can't totally disagree with that. Um, I... I don't know. I, I, I will say this. The fact that Willow left Chris in the back for the title match here on in, uh, on Dynasty on Sunday, the fact that Chris moves out, basically pushes uh, Mercedes and then gets out of the line of fire so Willow can get hit, I don't think that's an accident. Three beer might have something going on. I'm not going. I'm not saying that it's going to be a Shawn Michaels Diesel situation. I could see Willow being able to having to wrestle Chris as a heel with Stokely going the side. I love uh, Stokely and Mercedes together. That to me is the dream scenario. Now, if you want to throw Chris Statlander in it, so be it. To me, that's the the biggest loser in all this is Chris Statlander. She feels like she's getting lost in the sauce and all this. All right. Um, So then we had uh, Chaos, uh, Casino Gauntlet match. I I legitimately love this. I love that the announcers were just like, usually I don't like when the announcers don't know the rules, but they knew the rules at least, but like they had no idea what was going to happen. And because of that, we also had no idea it was going to happen. They said this is a gauntlet match that did not require everyone to lose and then be last man standing. It was the first person to score a pinfall or submission, so it was like sudden death. Pretty interesting spin uh, on it, and there was a lot of fun people in here. Uh, Jay White, uh, Dante Martin, uh, who else was in there? Penta. Penta, um, O'Reilly, Osprey. Commander Jay Lethal Lance Archer. I mean, it was kind of it's kind of fucking star studded right there at the very beginning. It was like, God damn, there's some real guys in this. Uh, Jay White and Will Osprey had a cool moment. Uh, 
uh, in the middle of the ring, which I thought was uh, yeah, real a fun fucking callback. Cool. Yeah, real fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> Good old New Japan. That the, that's that farm system for you, dub boy. <laughs> old salted caramel over there. <laughs> <laughs> salty. Nigga, you ain't lying, boy. I'm carrying that grudge the rest of the year. No, nah, three beers right. Now, as much as I, I poke fun of it. By the way, your new complete- nickname has got to be Salty. <laughs> <laughs> when this subject comes up, by all means, knock yourself out. You can call me that. I will answer that right away. Is it racist? <laughs> I'm, I'm never going to stop saying it. <laughs> You're never going to hear the end of that. I don't give a fuck. It was funny Put, as hell. Putting that out there. <laughs> no, as much as uh, I will make fun of it, three beers right, ultimately. These guys can go wherever they want to. If they went to WWE, if all of them went to WWE, I would be mad at them. If they just going to AEW, so I'm just mad at AEW. That's it. Nothing more than that. Yeah, uh, it is funny that um, Osprey got this chance by pinning Commander instead of, like, the greatest wrestler alive like he did the other night. But, uh, right. yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, but still, it makes sense. And uh, it is an interesting, uh, uh, so now it's going to be Osprey versus Roderick Strong. Uh, and a match I never nothing. thought of, and I'm like, oh, that's, that's going to be fucking Ooh. cool. <laughs> oh, <Yep>. you don't say. <laughs> Um, Roddy Strong can kinda, chop it up, dude. Mm-hmm. I said it last week, which is Will Ospreay until he wins the title and then after. Right. I think this is the perfect opportunity for Will Ospreay to lose um, and it be at the hands of Adam Cole to set up as Ospreay's first challenger for his inevitable title win. So that's what I'm calling early prediction. Osprey loses this match due to Adam Cole screwing him, and that sets up Adam Cole to be a challenger for Osprey's World Heavyweight title. Anyway, I mean, I would be into that. I uh, I don't see him losing to Roderick Strong, but um, I mean, when you put it like that, it's like, well, that kind of makes some sense. That but makes some I, sense. I, but I, I'll still pick Osprey. I'm not picking against Osprey. I'm not even gonna go down. Pay per view's not even for a month. <laughs> yeah, I want. Yeah, I'm gonna milk that shit I'm, until you make me to force force me to pick it. I'm not gonna pick it. I will say this: Adam Cole is a w- a wild card in a lot of this. Uh, I need to see him, you know, come back, have a match, you know, do some moves before I even inject him into anything crazy. If he does those things, he can check those boxes. Then. Uh, he's going to be in that title picture somehow, some way. I mean, the whole point of him mean mugging Wardlow, you know, after uh, the Roderick Strong match was, you know, foreshadowing that, things to come. That so. pairing has never made sense. Didn't even make sense with the MJF stuff. It, it made just, more sense it, then. It just does not seem like Wardlow's part of that group. Um, but that not, that's neither here nor there. They're going to turn on him, too. Yeah, they're yeah. going to jump his ass like a bunch of midgets. <laughs> <laughs> He's eating up. <laughs> That's it. It's, it's going to be like fucking jingle all the way or like kindergarten <laughs> cop. He's going to be like running through. If he's a dude attached to him. I'm going to just get uh, black on this for 30 seconds. If, I, if you ever seen I'm going to get you, sucker, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and that was Jason Gets Black on this. <laughs> 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 that should be a new segment right after the street count. Yeah, right. right. This week, yeah, um, Jason's getting black on this. <laughs> Hide the women and children. Sorry, Three Beer. Go ahead. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, we had uh, Jericho come out, and I'm just like, dude. And then, uh, yeah, he totally turned me. I love this so much. Uh, just as the, the tone deaf, uh, just veteran who's a total heel, but he thinks he's a face, talking about how he won the FTW title with the fans for them, and that we won it together. Talking about doing God's work, and by God's work, he's doing Terry Funk's work, uh, saying that he has a responsibility to teach the younger generation. And um, saying that fucking 
Cook made him hit him in the face with a baseball bat because uh, he wouldn't slow down, even though he was trying to teach him a lesson. Um, so good. He said it all with a smile on his face. Uh, Big Bo comes down, everything he says, and, uh, you know, so Big Bill saying, you know, watch me. And Joe was like, I'll be watching you, Big Bill. I'm watching all the guys. <laughs> Big Bill. Watch Big me. Bill. Live Morgan somewhere. Like, you know, be some money, motherfucker. <laughs> Big the Bill's out there as the willing pupil. Oh, I love this. Yeah. I also love I him being great. called the learning tree, Chris Jericho. That is Get such a money name, dude. dude. That is such a money Over name. Feet horrible it is are you kidding no not at all not at all you think that's horrible this just i'm sorry i just i couldn't roll my eyes enough during this segment oh, i get it this is, i get oh, it no this is the good stuff no this is this is the, this is the, the void smiling back fair enough then i'm not smiling that's exactly what it is and <laughs> <laughs> i ain't smiling motherfucker this this is just that bullshit no. i'm sorry God, the this learning hard tree pass. chris jericho hard pass I'm good. Thanks. Okay, Th- thanks. Be, well, at least, well, at least we know that Ricky Starks will be in good hands in WWE in the next few months. We'll just go that far. That's what I took away from that segment. Ricky Starks ain't been nowhere to be seen. You saw him come out for the Tag Team Championship Tournament. They lost right away. That's it. Ricky Starks out. Big Bill slides over to Jericho. That's what I'm take away from that. Yeah, good for Ricky Starks. He'll probably do good there. Um but uh, yeah, this is also this is Jericho being CM Punk, and I'm I'm here for it. He's very self aware, um, and that's usually not something that you get with uh, these guys. I'm not saying Jericho's cool; he's probably still a huge douchebag. Um, but he's like uh, people are complicated, and uh, he can be very good at what he does while being doing really cool things and also being a douchebag. And uh, he's really got it dialed in right now. So yeah, I mean this um, is, this is good. This is good stuff. I was like, oh, I mean, I think they even, people were saying it's like, oh, he's going to have to pivot, you know, because they were, I mean, he really got a lot of shit at, in St. Louis and it kind of seemed like go away heat too. <laughs> but man, he did it. He did it. I was, uh, I don't know why I doubted him. I'm, I'm into this. Okay. Yeah, Basically yeah. he could have done anything after calling himself the learning tree. I think that is so fucking cool. That is so funny <laughs> to me. The learning tree. He calls himself the learning tree. <laughs> Man, it's a, it's something, all right. I'm just gonna keep. I said my piece. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. It's right. God damn, y'all motherfuckers are some marks. It was not even three weeks ago. Y'all motherfuckers was over here putting dirt on him the same way I was. We all dug this hole. I'm now ready all of a sudden, to be turned. N- now all of a sudden, we digging this hole up. I'm like, why are we digging this hole up? I'm waiting <laughs> this to feels be saved. Like, this feels like Goodfellas. <laughs> Yeah, he just turned the go away heat into just good deal heat. I just got to eat. But I ain't digging up this hole. <laughs> That's all I got to say. You, you kiss this Disrespectful. St. Louis is disrespectful. St. Louis owes him an apology. Oh, oh shit. I wasn't there. <laughs> go ahead, 350. Uh, main event, at least as far as uh, matches went, uh, IWGC World Heavyweight title, John Moxley versus Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, this is uh, solid. Um, good match. Uh, it seemed like it ended a little early. I think uh, Hobbs actually got a legit injury here. It looks like he injured his knee. Um, but, you know, like, as far as, like, the brawling and uh, Hobbs being a monster and all that, uh, looked real good. Uh, Mox, can, Mox is not, like, the guy that normally sells a lot, uh, but he can sell, and he, did, he sold for Hobbs, uh, which was cool. And, um, yeah, uh, victory by Mox, uh, you know, put him to sleep with the bulldog choke. Not surprising there, but uh, overall, pretty good. Yeah, um, I, I didn't know that uh, Hobbs got legitimately hurt here in this. I just thought the, the knee was part of the uh, work and part of the uh, the match itself. If uh, that is the case, that kind of sucks. Um, I have I had hopes for Hobbs, you know. I always have to remind myself when I see him, you know, he was a former TNT champion. You know, there was a, a book of Hobbs uh, 
storyline that was going, you know, going for a little bit. That didn't happen. You know, paired him with Don Callis. That's not happening. So, I mean, it just feels like every time Powerhouse Hobbs has something going on, something jumps in his way, whether it's booking or, in this case, the injury or whatever the case may be, something jumps in his way. I never thought that Hobbs was going to win. Obviously, he's not winning. Um, it just – for me, it it just kind of left a little bad taste in my mouth because if you're going to explain the the reason why he got this match, then now this match has to be kind of good and it ended abruptly. Whether, you know, like I said, the knee was a part of the, the match or not, it just felt like the match just ended. And then I was like, oh, damn, that's it? You know, and so then I'm like, okay, well, that kind of sucks. You know, like I said, Hobbs wasn't going to win, but the way the match kind of just ended. That to me was to the the down point, I guess, for for lack of a better word. Yeah, I think that's why. Uh, but Takashi came out and called out Moxley, and that's gonna rule. So, yeah. okay, yeah. Look, I, yeah. have a, I have a philosophical question. Do you guys have a problem with Moxley winning the IWGP Championship and then coming to Dynamite and defending it like the next week against Powerhouse Hobbs? I do. I don't. Oh, I do. Definitely. Like that, that that belt is not defended like that. I mean that I mean giving Powerhouse Hobbs a, a shot at the IWGP, what what did he do to earn that shot? Well they they explained it on collision where Don Callis, you know, cashed in, quote unquote, the favors that New Japan owed him for delivering Kenny Omega and all these great matches, so now Powerhouse Hobbs gets his title shot again. That's what he wasted it on? Okay. He wasted yeah, it on I mean, they Hobbs? played it in store. They did explain it in the storyline, so I didn't. I didn't mind it because at least it was like at least there's an explanation. It, yeah, and listen, right or wrong, I just, you at least you got that part. That, now, whether it, you you like it or not, that's up to the individual. Uh, having know. having Moxley defend that title against Powerhouse Hobbs feels like they're treating the IWGP Championship like it's the ROH Championship, which they don't treat very well. I mean, yikes! They can, I mean, Powerhouse Hobbs can challenge for the ROH championship, and I don't have a problem with it. But him fighting Moxley for the fucking same belt that Osprey and Okada and Nakamura and Naito and all those guys have held? What the fuck? Actually, it's the new belt, so it has a much shorter lineage, but uh, it is Don't also... talk to me about lineages. <laughs> <laughs> Do not it's do also... that. It's also New Japan's call. Like they would not just say like, "Oh, this is for the belt." If New Japan didn't do it, um, all that stuff is is their call. I don't think it's a good call, but I don't. I didn't mind it. Oh, I'm sure it's their call. I just think it's a bad call. It's like that is that's not doing anything. You got to make that belt feel as special as it feels. I, I think that's what they're trying to do, but they're doing it in a way that I don't agree with. Now, do you know how you get a title shot? In IWGP, you win the G1. <laughs> <laughs> there are guys that fight fucking 40 matches in three weeks for a shot at that title. And then Moxie wins it, and now Powerhouse Hobbs is fighting for it? Well, there is. Hey, am, I am I wrong? Am I wrong? Tell him what he's telling no. lies. Tell him what Listen, he's telling lies. <laughs> two times a year, two times a year, you have to win a tournament. The other times, you just have to walk out after the uh, champion has won. Like that's how they set up the title match. Just somebody just walks out and like challenges them. I mean, yeah, but I was, you know, trying to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you here. Fine. Tell him what he's telling lies, motherfucker. All right, you feel better now, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I don't have a strong feeling. Uh, I do, I do want uh, Shibata to uh, be giving uh, Siri voiced compliments uh, to other people's wives every <laughs> week on Dynamite. It's a good, so, it's uh, a good bit. I didn't think it I would like it, but it, this week made me actually laugh out loud. I was like, okay, that shit was funny. <laughs> Fair enough. Right on. Good, good you think, Shibata. Those rhinestones are shaped like a heart. That's fun. And you're like, yeah, you're, not only are you, were you staring at Renee's chest, but you typed all that into the phone to translate. Um, so anyway. Moxley's um, sitting in the cup chair barely off camera. <laughs> <laughs> just, just bleeding. How <laughs> oh, gross. God damn. 
Oh, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Shivani's in the ring to introduce Jack Perry. Uh, Jack oh, Perry uh, has Tony Khan come out. Uh, basically, says uh, you know he's had some of the best nights of his life in Jacksonville. Um, he says you know he only wants what's best for AEW. Ask him to shake his hand, reinstate him, and they're going to go on and change the world together. And you knew this was not going to go good. <laughs> um, I'm sitting here watching this shit like, this is classic baby face shit. Yo, dumbass, come out here by yourself. Whoop that trick. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah, he gives him a hug. Uh, Jack Perry's got the shitty and grin during the hug. Um, hits him in the stomach with a. Uh, microphone, which causes Tony Khan to do a back bump. <laughs> <laughs> I do which, know. Uh, you go down on one knee. It's simple. It's like, boom, all. Oh, oh. <laughs> but, ma- but man. <laughs> this motherfucker went back. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> he hit you in the stomach, dude. God damn. That is so funny. He was excited to do that bump. I can tell. Oh, it's, it's, like yeah. when you, it's like when you see people meet their heroes or like throw out the first pitch. I didn't even. And they don't even make it to the, to, to the home plate. I didn't even trip. <laughs> I didn't even trip on it until fucking Zach That's the first like, thing I did. I was he took like, a really hard back bump, too. <laughs> he, was, he probably practiced that like shit all finger, week. Finger and poke was like, doom. <laughs> all week? He's been doing that his whole life. I bet, I guarantee him and, his, him and his brother or cousin have been doing that for years. This is your big moment. Tell you. It's going to work. So this I'm going to punch I'm you in your chest. I'm ready. I'm going down like a ton of bricks. <laughs> I'm going to punch you in your stomach. Just go down. <laughs> That's what I went down the wrong way. It was, so, like, it was like Nia Jax So then they give him the, uh, I mean. Yeah, they give him. No, so they come out. Uh, Okada and the Bucks come out. And they're helping Tony up, and they're like, what did you do? And they're helping him up, and they got one in each hand. It looks like we set up for the BTE or the or the EVT trigger. I'm when, laughing my ass off at this point. I'm like, do it, do it. I was, dude, I was cracking up. Like, I loved this angle so much. I was so into it. And then, uh, like, uh, Okada's like, no, 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 don't do that. And he's like, lift him up. And so he just picks him up. They do, like, the greatest melter ever or whatever they call it now. Um, and, I mean, Tony Khan is dead. Uh, <laughs> he is just completely out. Uh, this is phenomenal heat. Everybody is so mad. Um, it was, like, we've seen angles like this. We've seen, you know, NWO beats up Eric Bischoff, right? Like, we, you know, it's probably the most, you know, c- close comparison. But uh, we haven't seen it in a while. It was very well done. It was very fun. Uh, then I think my favorite part of the whole thing was Shad Khan. <laughs> and dude, that guy exudes do not fuck with me energy. Like, he should be a regular. Like, so you jokers coming out and do this shit on national TV. What the I hope, fuck? Did, I hope Tony Khan showed up in the Jaguars war, war room today for the draft. Nigga, don't. Wearing a neck brace. <laughs> he, he did, I think. I think he did. Yes. I thought that was Photoshop. I swear to God. <laughs> yes. That is that is so good when they have to take the angle out in public <laughs> and just look so ridiculous. It's like a humiliation kink. Oh, I, I guarantee he showed up to that to that room today. Looking like me the day after Bill's bachelor party. <laughs> Rough <laughs> as hell. I mean, he walks in there wearing the neck brace to sell a wrestling injury, and I bet those all all those old football scouts the are there like, you, man? what is Shad Khan's <laughs> fucking kid doing here? Why is he wearing a neck brace? Dude, I'm sharing the picture with you guys if you didn't see it. It's fucking money. <laughs> they're like rubbing they're like rubbing the top of his hair and messing up his hair. Anyway, <laughs> so no, like, good job, buddy. Uh, <laughs> hey, does little this, guy. Does this justify does this justify them showing the footage, the whole Jack Perry angle? Because it seems like they showed the footage to get people thinking about Jack Perry again. And then they introduced him yeah. to the pay-per-view, and now there's a big angle. Does this justify them showing that footage? I mean, they didn't have anything to justify. Like, I whether you thought it was a good idea or not, like, 
uh, they definitely it, had an idea. Does it justify and, it as a good idea? Oh, man, hell no. Oh, that is idea. not real. No. <laughs> no. <Yes. laughs> There's to, we're looking at Tony Khan. Yeah, we're looking at Tony Khan wearing the neck brace. <laughs> Smiling. No. Like, look at me. <laughs> Just say, I'm playing hey, pretend. No way, dog. No. I swear to God, if I see that in real life, I'm going to giggle my neck narrow ass off. I, I'm no, sorry. that's totally real. No. There's a whole bunch of different pictures yeah. of him. Is that is that one of the uh, twins that used to come out with uh, Jinder Mahal next to him? The, the, uh, or is that one of the guys that owns Manchester City? <laughs> the this is bad. <laughs> so, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're cool with this angle. Um, I loved it. I, I don't think it. Honestly, this is why I think happened. I think Tony th- threw the, the film footage out there to become a sympathetic figure. When that didn't work, we pivoted to this. Now he's a sympathetic figure because he took a bump. There's no pivot. There's no pivot. <laughs> I'm, dude, you you, 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 I'm dead ass serious. This is the way my mind thought for 30 seconds. I was like, man, this motherfucker did this, and so we feel sorry for him. And look, for 30 seconds, in kayfabe style, you should feel sorry for him. He got his ass whomped on national TV in his own channel. In its own ring, in its own company. However, I'm not going to sit up here and say for for one second that he didn't put the footage out there to begin with to say, "Hey, no, this is what oh, really what? happened." Either way, he can accomplish two things at once. Okay, fine. Like, Both things could was, be true. Both yeah. things could he be knew true. That he was bringing Jack Perry back. Like, okay, I mean, it you, wasn't like that's fine too. You could tie it all in, but. The initial reason was to say, no, CM Punk is wrong. This is what happened. Oh, yeah, it was two birds, one stone. It was a two birds, one yeah. stone scenario. Uh, are you cool with it, though? You like Tony Khan being an on-screen character and taking bumps? As long as it's not a regular thing, then, yeah. This this sets up, you know, Kenny Omega, Paige, I, yeah. whomever else they want to drag into like, this. Yeah, I feel I feel the same. Tony should not come on TV. What do you think or all that often? What do you think, Zach? Yeah, I don't think he should be like a fish off or anything uh, for a variety of ways. But uh, I don't think uh, this I, – I love the, the angle in isolation. And, you know, if he if he's on TV a little bit uh, to set up, like, this next match or whatever, um, that's fine. I mean, it was a big angle. It would be weird if he was not did not answer this or this did not play into the storyline. He was just, like, off TV. But long term, I'm, I'm with you guys. For sure. That's going to do for our two count. One, two, three. Despite what you may believe after the first one hour and 40 minutes of this podcast, WWE does exist. And <laughs> five hours of television. Seven do, 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 hours of television do, do, do. this week. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest takeaway, we're not, we don't have to go through the whole thing, but uh, I think the biggest takeaway is Becky Lynch is your new champion. She wins a Battle Royal taking out Liv Morgan last. Uh, Nia Jax had a good showing, uh, but she got eliminated. So Becky Lynch is your new champ. Uh, Jason, what do you think about this? Safe pick. Um, I'm not mad like most of the IWC I've seen losing their damn minds about it. But, I mean, if you're going to make this decision, if Rhea is not going to be out for long, this is the safest bet of the bunch. I'm not a big Liv Morgan WWE Women's Champion. I think if there was a mid card title, she would be perfectly slotted for that. But she has tons of fans, and in that reason, she's over. That being said, um, I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm kind of down to see this if Liv Morgan kind of reels Dom in, and you have Dom in between. Live and Rhea when she returns and somehow this goes into breaking up the judgment day Finn's going to come back here in a little bit Finn's going to obviously not be too happy the way Damian Priest is walking around with a title that he's never won so I would expect somehow some way that to break off but ultimately just back to the point Becky Lynch is a safe pick I don't have a problem with it it would be you know, there was really three women that were, had a chance to win the match, and the th- those three women were there at the end. So, yeah, pick one of the three. I, Becky Lynch yeah, is fine. It's, it's the safest pick. It's it it's so predictable in hindsight that they would put it on somebody who's had it before and that can have big matches on the next few pay per views. You know, they're doing big things, and uh, 
I get, they could probably afford to experiment a little bit, but it doesn't make sense, or it doesn't surprise me that they're not. What do you think, Zach? Yeah, I don't know why I'd uh, consider the Marlboro woman as uh, the potential Mm-mm. winner of this. How you call she it? She does. It's like, <laughs> like a pack of Marlboro Reds. <laughs> All that writing on her, it's the Surgeon General's warning. <laughs> I, I look at her more like a Paul Mall. Because <laughs> she, has, she has no filter. Stop! <laughs> good. Good. Stop. Well, how are we feeling about Solo interjecting himself as, uh, I guess, the, the de facto leader of the bloodline right now? Tama Tonga dragging out uh, KO, busting him up, um, I guess. And then on top of it, I guess the accident was the precursor to it. We didn't see that. Then Tama Tonga dragging him out, busted up, is the uh, the result of that. Solo feels like he's the de facto leader now. Paul Heyman's running around looking like he's created, you know, Frankenstein's monster and can't control it. Talk to me about thoughts about Bloodline 2.0, Zach. Oh, man, I'm into it. Um, you know, we need a little bit of a life into the storyline because it, it's it been so long-term, and it, 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 it's been mostly peaks. I wouldn't say there's been any it's valleys, been. but uh, it's been, uh, I don't even want to say stale, but it's been very similar for a long time. And so having some new it's faces, been. having uh, Tamatanga, who's come off like, such a freaking megastar, like, just tough dude. Uh, he's jacked right now. He looks great. Um, Solo that, comes off. That of WWE formula is working real well for <laughs> right. Yeah. No, he yeah. was already jacked coming in. I'm, so, I'm, I'm totally him joking. That I'm totally catering. <laughs> him, and, him and AJ yeah. Styles are making shakes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, I just eat meat. I, I, I don't even look at carbs. I just eat meat. That's how, this, that's how I get like this. Yeah, motherfucker, whatever. <laughs> Go in there and bust Kevin Owens out. <laughs> Pow- powdered horse cum. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's too expensive. They can't even afford that on the WWE salary. That's real expensive. <laughs> that, that's just the main event, guys. But there's so that's much. The, the mid cards can't afford that. <laughs> but there's so much protein. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, what the fuck are we talking about? Horny Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This ain't making me horny. <laughs> uh, I am cool. Uh, I think the solo thing is perfect. I said it last week. Like, they pivoted the exact right way. Uh, solo looks really comfortable cutting promos. Um, you know, I who love knew? the fact that he they didn't did. talk forever, and now and he's, now he's talking. Awesome. And now it's just like, <laughs> like, oh shit, what's yeah. this motherfucker going to say now, boss? It's, it's legit badass. Mm. Um, what did you guys think about the Seamus and McIntyre? Uh, <laughs> Exchange, because I thought it was awesome. Drew Pretty torched brutal. that dude. Drew torched that motherfucker. I'm like, dude, stop, stop uh, the it. Burger after burger after burger <laughs> thing. I'm like, okay, that's it. All right, all right, all right, all right. You said enough. Go, that's go sit good. over there in commentary. <laughs> that's good. Even Seamus had to give this motherfucker Drew his props. We've said it on the on the pod multiple times. This version of Drew is the best version he's ever had. No in his, doubt. In his whole 100%. WWE run, and now he's got the mic skill. To Eve, just that cherry on top. He shut that crowd down like it wasn't shit. They started chanting what? I started shaking my head. I'm like, you better, y'all gonna stop fucking with Drew McIntyre about this one yeah, chant. Yeah, they're gonna have to learn. 99% of these motherfuckers, you can rattle with them. Drew McIntyre is not one of them. He will shut that shit down and make you laugh while like, you're doing it. Stop. Zach, where you at? Love it. Also, they're gonna have a match and it's gonna rule because they've had matches before that have ruled. So. Yeah, they're going to have a great match. You know, Sheamus, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, I was happy to see him come back. Did not expect that out of myself. Yeah. Uh, I'm all about Sheamus. I hear you the bar. I got you, guys. He doesn't set the bar. He is the bar. No shit. Miss you, Cesaro, at least in that scenario. Burger after burger after burger. Ooh, I was like, uh-uh. Stop. Stop that shit. Uh, L.A. Knight. Uh, Drew McIntyre, get in this room right now. L.A. Knight loses to A.J. Styles. A.J. Styles is the number one contender. I think there's going to be a contract signing tomorrow night on SmackDown. Uh, what do you think about A.J. being 
Uh, Cody's first challenger uh, after his big win at WrestleMania, Zach. Uh, I'll tell you the number thing I love most about it is WWE is given the chance to either go with the bigger fan reaction or bigger star or the better match. They never choose the better match. Like it's always like the the biggest reaction, biggest star. This time they chose the better match. And I'm much more excited for that match than I would be for LA Knight, even if LA Knight got the fans behind him right now. So I thought it was a win. JCB. Um, I can't say I disagree. Um, I think LA Knight is good in the ring, despite what you guys think. But ultimately, if we're going to start the Cody Rhodes uh, title reign off on the right foot, I think, you know, wrestling AJ Styles is a good place to start. Uh, even if LA Knight won that uh, tournament, it just didn't. It doesn't feel like he's a main event guy. He slotted to me mid card. AJ Styles has main event cachet, and that's a good place to start for Cody Rhodes. The Street Profits. Fucking two and a half star title match. If you had like an LA Knight, you'd be like that would be like such a, a dud. Anyway, go on. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean he's right though. Like, oh man, Jason, Jason you're. You know, oddly enough, you're in the minority here. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit. True, but you ain't shit. Uh, he can't yeah, even help himself. A, a, right. He can't even help himself. Right. Say, oh, it's a four-foot goal? Let me dunk on him. <laughs> Tre- 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 okay. Tre- uh, Tre- the Tre- Street Profits are fighting a town, a town down under for the – Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, this could be a fun match. Uh, I would like to see the Street Profits do something. Uh, well, they, they're getting Jason. ready to put these jokers over. Good luck. <laughs> no shit. Uh, it should be a good match, though. Uh, what do you think about it, Zach? Love the new title belt. Um, mm. But, yeah, I'm not super enthused about the I, li- I like the segment with um, Nick Aldis and Triple H. I thought that was really cool. Um, made me want to see Nick Aldis wrestle those guys more than anything uh but um but yeah uh i don't really give a shit they, like they're fine for talking segments but i'm not really interested in their matches Whew. they got they got they can they can prove me wrong i i do like grayson waller a lot more than i like uh Austin theory but uh they're gonna have to they're gonna have to win me over yeah i mean i i'm only thinking about grayson waller here like austin theory to me is a he's an afterthought uh i love grayson waller Dang. um but Sorry, yeah. Austin. <laughs> I, I tried not to get that shrapnel on you twice, but yeah, you just caught both. <laughs> I, there's nothing wrong with Austin Theory. I just fucking Crew, love. There's something. No, I just no, he just ain't Grayson Waller. <laughs> oh shit! Damn. I mean, it's just it's just true. Grayson Waller's the he's one. The beat John Cena at, uh, at WrestleMania. Don't mean shit no more. <laughs> what have you done for me lately? Uh, Imperium. <laughs> Imperium. Uh, Basically kicks out Giovanni Vinci. Paul Bassett. Yeah. Um, R.I.P. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know how much more we're gonna see of him. I was gonna to say we talked Cameron Grimes up to get his hands has chopped off. This motherfucker is probably the next one on the list. Cameron Grimes should show up and fight Will Osprey. Shit, make it happen, Cameron. <laughs> hey, hey, BFR will send flowers. <laughs> I would love to see Cameron Grimes come out and tell Will Osprey he's gonna send them to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> that would fucking Straight rip to the moon. Ring uh, the bell. Let's see here. <laughs> uh, did you think it was weird that Grayson Waller just didn't shake Triple H's hand? Like how nope. big of a, how big of a heel do you have to be that big that of a heel? So, I love that. Yes, I thought it was. So I was good. like, nice. That's what's up. Okay, there you go. This, it's heel shit. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, give me that, the title I mean, belt. It's good heel shit. Um, let's see. We're getting Sami Zayn versus Bronson Reed from the Intercontinental. I'm looking forward to that match. Workhorse title should be, have a workhorse champion, and you got a, a big ass workhorse to with across the ring from it. So it should be interesting. Zach, yeah, perfect. Uh, Sami works best as an underdog. Um, he's definitely an underdog against a big monster like Bronson Reed. So uh, they'll work right together real well. Uh, what I think is cool is that um, they are having guys come out and declare themselves big guys like Gunther coming out and declare themselves in the King of the Ring tournament. That automatically makes the King of the Ring tournament not only not only by virtue of the fact that it has Gunther in it, 
But because Gunther's coming out there and talking about, like, hey, I'm going to go win this motherfucker. Drew McIntyre is it. Drew McIntyre the same way. That's cool. That makes it seem like it's... Earth? Yeah, it's like the New Japan Cup or something what like that. A, no, it just it instantly... It's going to be a tournament that means something. It Stakes. instantly takes away from, like, an, your boy Xavier Woods and other kind of gimmicky king of the rings the worst of the king past. of the ring of all time xavier uh, woods you're welcome uh since you <laughs> since you're just shitting on everybody like, <laughs> i yeah, gave you that you one for free i appreciate you're it you're welcome wasn't was mabel the king of the Rings? yes he was okay <laughs> and he's still saying king of the Rings. My, my point exactly i do not remember mabel being he was king of it the was ring. it was that, horrible that, that is insane dude was, had to fuck it i think they carried him on like when they used to do it back in the day when they like carried the king of the ring to the ring I'm sure at one point they carried Mabel to the ring. I'm not like 99% sure, was, but... There were 30 people before it. Yeah, literally. What, I'm pretty sure shit's out there. Anyway, not the point. Soon as uh, Drew and Gunther said they were in the uh, King of the Ring tournament, that instantly got my attention right away. So it goes away from the gimmicky King of the Ring to where now whoever wins it gets a title match, and then now it means something again. So now at that point, you got my attention. I'm ready for this shit. Yes. When is it? Uh, I don't think they've announced the like the the dates. The final is I think is in uh, Saudi or whatever. Next week we're doing predictions for Backlash, right? Yes. Backlash is a week from this Saturday. Yes, it's like four in the morning, some crazy shit. Yes, yeah, over in uh, France. Yeah. God damn it, four in the morning. Uh, and Gable cuts his first heel promo. Woof. Scorched Earth. Yeah. Your boy is good. hot. What you think about it, Zach? <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was real good. Uh, uh, I never would have thought he'd be a good heel that wasn't a goof, but uh, he's a good heel that's not a goof. No, that, no uh, both said it best. That was Ether. But, you know, uh, it wasn't even scorched earth. He talked about them dirty, like they're dirty dogs. I was like, Ugh, stop. Dude, everybody talks about Ether being the biggest diss tape. This was... This was no Vaseline. <laughs> Bias Cube. This is the best ever. This is no Vaseline. I do like no Vaseline. That's one of my personal The only days. odds and ends I have is I didn't get a chance to watch NXT because it wasn't there wasn't a version of it on the uh, illegal website that I watch. But um, Gotta have multiples. No baby. Hulu for you? You know what? I didn't even check who. But uh, Trick Williams is your new champion. He goes over Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov, reportedly, I only read this. I'm a journalist. Uh, gave him a pretty hearty hug uh, before and after the match. So put Trick Williams over big. Trick Williams is your new NXT champion. Uh, what do you think, Zach? Uh, yeah, I actually, the one week I did watch NXT. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I was all ready. I'm like, I got it. <laughs> Unprofessional bullshit. I, let's say you, you gotta have multiple websites going on, man. What's wrong with you, man? What the fuck? You ain't you the motherfucker that like years ago was on our ass weekly. Gotta watch NXT. Gotta watch NXT. Gotta watch NXT. On this 2.0, you guys are sleeping. Da 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 da. Yeah, you gonna take a little heat for this one, brother. Go go ahead. Three but, three beard. Uh, yeah, finish your was- thought. Uh, and not as good as their first match, uh, but it was solid. And yeah, Trick uh, won the belt. And um, yeah, like I think uh, you know Trick Williams is best with you know, the matches that they're really dragging off. Um, he's gonna have like this is kind of I don't want to say sink or swim, but he's the champ. Um, he's got a lot of charisma. He's gonna be a future superstar. Uh, he's a guy that you can like totally see like at WrestleMania, but. Um, he is not quite there yet, and I think this is a good spot for him. It's going to give him some pressure to perform uh, and to you know take his career to the next level. So uh, good for Trick. Good for Trick. I'm really, really, really looking forward to Dragunov uh, on Raw or SmackDown. Put Dragunov in big matches. Uh, wherever Damian Priest is. Well, actually. Let that motherfucker cook for a little while. Give him a good pit push, and he will be over. Now that I'm thinking about it, that is a nice little segue to the WWE draft that is happening on tomorrow night leading into oh, Monday yeah, night, right. whatever the case may be, with um, Damian Priest and Dragunov uh, crossing paths backstage before the match. 
to me, that's all that's saying is wherever Damian Priest is, in this case, the, the champions aren't moving their protected, so the champions stay on their respective brands. I think that's a smart move, neither here nor there. So I would expect to see Ilya Dragunov in some form or fashion on the Raw side. Yep. That would give, you know, immediate um, opponent for Damian Priest if he retains the title, if Gunther is on – that side that would honestly now that I'm starting to think about it, that would probably mean that Gunther would be on the raw side because you can't you cannot allow Dragonoff and Gunther to be on opposite sides at this point. It, yeah. that, that is a money match. It's there to be had, so you can put that Gunther on that side of the fence. But ultimately, like I said, the draft's coming up Friday, Monday. The biggest thing is the to me that the the champions are protected. The tag champs are are eligible to move, but ultimately that doesn't yeah. matter. I mean, nobody really cares about that shit. Ultimately, uh, at least the top brass does. So, uh, interested to see at least uh, where people will fall on the draft on Friday and uh, Monday night. Bo, the the fun thing is that we're going to see Dragonov beat the shit out of Ricochet. For the next two oh, weeks. Come on, man! <laughs> Damn, dog. <laughs> he, he's just gonna bury him. Why, 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 why we got to be on Ricochet, dude? Ricochet, is, Ricochet is the ultimate fluff. He's like the subway before Ron Jeremy gets busy. <laughs> man from ringside. Hey, everybody! We got some birthdays this week. Uh, Vladimir Kozlov is forty-five. Alex Riley is 43. Drew Gulak, who apparently got murdered by the family. <laughs> is that the story they're telling? That he got murdered? <laughs> so so apparently no quarter catch crew, uh, and K-Fame style, <laughs> no quarter catch crew comes to the family and asks uh, the family to bump off Drew Gulak, and they haven't paid him, <laughs> paid them for the shit, and now you have this angle going on with, you know, basically, you know, the family looking for their money. Well, No quarter's not paying up, and now they're losing matches. Gulak, <laughs> I mean, then Gulak would have been 37. <laughs> uh Titus O'Neil is 47, and Jay Lethal is 39. Pretty short week bump for birthdays, so. Oh, and Bo is going to be Bo sitting next to me. Vice is going to be 44. Happy birthday, Vice. Happy birthday, motherfucker. Birthday week for Vice. I can't believe I almost forgot that. Damn, my he, bad. He, he almost bad. threw himself out there and be like, nigga, don't forget. Well, well, the, wor- the worst part is that's his passcode. My birthday is his passcode to get in his phone. <laughs> For Vice, happy birthday for Tender Mahal, for Murray the Murray Man Murray, for Lucha Chris, Check. for Patriot Pat, for Brett Jagger, Check. for my beautiful family, for Two Years Act Bowman, for Jason Cornelius. I am Bill Veggie. That's my dog. Black Lives Matter, Check. support your local Check. restaurant, support your local Check. weed dealers, give your Check. parents a call, and always boo the heels. Boo, boo. bitch.